Right now we're at the Inter-American Court of Human Rights, the Corte Interamericana de Derechos Humanos, and students come to the Inter-American Court of Human Rights during the Santa Cara Law Costa Rica Summer Program uh, to learn about specific rules and norms on human rights that apply in the Inter-American system. Now the great thing about the Inter-American Court and this experience for students is that the attorneys that work at the court are the ones that actually teach this part of the, of the class. Welcome to the office. This is uh, Pablo Rodriguez, he's my colleague from the regional legal unit. Pablo, ellos van a ser nuestras interns por un mes y un poquito más. De... No son de Santa Clara, ¿verdad? Una sí, otra no. Sí. So, who's from Santa Clara? Me. You. And you? I'm from Maryland, from Orlando, Florida. Florida, yes. great, that's great. Well, I've definitely enjoyed the program at Santa Clara. It has far exceeded my expectations. Um, my first impression walking through the office was, wow, this is beautiful. I feel very blessed to be able to be a part of it and very thankful to Santa Clara for um, putting this together and making those connections for us. Uh, my experience with the program has been amazing so far. The amount of information that is packed into such a short period of time has really been uh, mind boggling and opening my mind to a lot of different things that interest me um, and the I feel very fortunate to be a part of the program to have access to all these different uh, both professors and legal professionals um, first experience in the building it's absolutely beautiful and I'm really excited to get to work with such uh, good people doing good work so our program is actually three weeks long the first two weeks are at the Inter-American Institute of Human Rights, which is about two blocks from the Inter-American Court of Human Rights. But the third week, we actually have students have class at the public hearing room of the Inter-American Court of Human Rights. We usually spend two or three days here uh, learning about human rights law. But we also uh, invite speakers from the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, and we invite uh, speakers from local NGOs, from local human rights NGOs, uh, to learn and be exposed to not only what the Inter-American Court does, but to what litigants before the Inter-American Court do. And we learn about refugee law from the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. So, we just got shown around um, here at Akai, where I'm going to do my internship starting Monday at 7 a.m., bright and early. Um, it's a last for six weeks, and um, yeah, we're going to be working with people who are trying to get asylum and refugee status. Um, should be great. I'm excited to start. Um, got some reading to do, so we'll, uh, we'll pick up, I guess, next week and see, see how it goes. After spending two weeks in classes at the Inter-American Institute learning about human rights law from the United Nations and from the Inter-American system, you know, we go then out into the field, right? This year, we repeated what we've done in previous years, which is just a fantastic experience. We take students to talk to a union of workers in the pineapple and banana plantations who just have horrible working conditions. And, and the actual union workers get to explain to the students you know what it is what what are the issues that are affecting them for example you know a lot of the workers are being exposed to pesticides and contaminants you know workers uh, get sick and they don't have any time off you know they may get laid off because of their labor union activities right so they actually get to the students get to talk to the workers themselves and the labor union organizations to understand this problem from this side of the world one of the things that I like about that experience is that students don't often think about where our products come from. So we are consumers in the United States of, for example, pineapple. Um, but here students get to learn you know, how pineapples are actually produced and what workers have to go through you know, for us to be able to eat those pineapples in the United States. And it's, it's a big problem. You know, here you have large multinational corporations who are making a lot of money, but on the backs of the workers. And it's good for the students actually to learn that and 
to maybe make a decision, informed decision about whether or not they want to keep consuming these products, right? La asistencia en la última semana sé que no estuvo del todo bien y gracias a que tengo dos libros aquí significa que dos estudiantes no vinieron durante dos días. So, how long have you been taking language classes? Um, just for two weeks. This is our third week. And, and how, how have they been? It's been awesome. It's been a great experience because it hasn't been just the language component. We've learned a lot about the culture of Costa Rica and the religion. So it's been wonderful. So when you came into this class, like, what would you say your, your language proficiency was? Um, intermediate to advanced. I just wanted to polish up my skills, work on verb, and become more comfortable with speaking in Spanish. And I've definitely been able to do that. So, so do you feel like you're, you're in the advanced level now? Or? Um, almost there? Yeah, almost there. It's <laughs> definitely helped. I mean, it's with three weeks, it's hard to say that, you know, that I've improved greatly. But yeah, it's definitely helped. Any practice is great. So um, I know you uh, you guys have an exam with Francisco on um, Friday. Um, are, is there an exam for like the Spanish classes as well? Or no, just... there's not an exam. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just a nice venue where we can come and practice without any pressure and that's been great. Um, I think something else that's been really impactful is being here at the court. I think it's really important to see the place where laws are made, where policy is made, and where justice is um, protected and it's also uh, enhanced. Uh, we've had different speakers from the court here, different attorneys that are working here, and their presentations have been very, very enlightening. They're very open to asking, to uh, answering questions, to taking questions, to giving you more information. And the way that they present the law, and not just the law, but here's something in particular, the policy. I realized listening to some of the lectures that the law is actually an idea. A series of ideas that we assemble together in an orderly fashion to govern the way that we choose to exist on earth. And I didn't understand how much the law is an idea that we've agreed upon as correct for governing our standards of behavior. And that I think is very, very impactful because ideas, ideas can change. Ideas can be enhanced. Ideas can be refined. The program has been incredible. I think something that's been really is exceptionally meaningful to me was just being able to attach so many faces to stories. These are cases and people um, that we read about all the time in our doctrinal classes and that we read about in our readings this summer, but it was really incredible the opportunities that Professor Josie and Professor Rivera provided us with to be able to actually go out into communities and have conversations with people about what they're actually experiencing, and actually experiencing, which made it more meaningful to me. This is an incredible experience, and I'm so incredibly blessed <laughs> to be a part of it this summer. It was it was wonderful. Both professors, the classes were phenomenal, and it's just a really great experience. One feedback that we received on after our field trip last time just made my day because uh, one student actually said, I learned more about real life today in the field trip than I did in all my years of education combined. I think that was fantastic.